my name is Alex Hudson. Welcome to Chakalisa. Um, the first thing you will experience when you come to Chakalisa is you'll be guided into the auditorium. You'll get a 10-minute um, video that will give, introduce you to the site, what we have here at Chakalisa, and you will also have a chance to look at our traveling exhibits as well as some instruments and different weapons that are also some recreation we have here. This is our traveling exhibit. It's on loan to us from the Chickasaw Nation. It starts from the very beginning of their migration story and goes all the way to recent day, uh, one of their Chickasaw members that is an astronaut. As soon as you finish with the video, our visitors have a chance to get a hands-on experience with some Native American instruments, as well as some instruments from around the world that are very similar to Native American instruments. Our museum store consists of a lot of different arts and crafts, of Native American crafts people from around this area. So all of the crafts are Native American made. We also have a really great variety of books from archaeology studies, also different tribes, as well as children's books and teacher's aids. So we have many different craft and program options for programming for students to come in. First is a coloring book that is, tells the story of Chuck Alyssa from, about the site and about different activities that go on at storytelling, different uh, Native Americans, and this is available. We also have a craft that is a talking stick. Now this is a talking stick. And the talking stick is used during council meetings when the leader or whoever is talking is the person that gets to hold the stick and nobody else can talk and s except for the person that's holding the stick. So students get to make their own version of a talking stick that they can take with them and use in the classroom or at home in their own discussions. We also have a Sinti, which is Sinti is the Choctaw word for snake. Students really enjoy painting their own Sinti that they get to take home with them and tell their parents that they learned a Choctaw word, Sinti, which means snake. Native Americans also used to make different jewelry items. Here are some examples of some pottery beads that have flecks of mica in them. These are artifacts. Students get to make their own beaded necklace. This has shells or a bear claw. Here's another one with shells, another one with shells and beads. Students also get the opportunity to make their own pottery vessel. These are some examples of some reproduction pottery that is on display. And students get to make their own version of a pinch pot or a coil pot that they can take home with them and paint. We're also offering a music program. Here's an example of a bamboo flute that students will get to take home with them after they've completed the music program. The music program describes different Native American instruments as well as other instruments from around the world. Another object that is often found in different mound sites are, different, are copper plates that are designed with various symbolism. Students get to make their own copper plate that is embossed with a symbol that is important to them. We have many baskets throughout the museum that are still hand woven in the traditional way made out of river cane. Students get the choice to choose various types of baskets they would like to weave. This one is made out of raffia. These two are hand spun with various colors of yarn. This one's made out of jute. 
and is decorated with different beads. So students get to make their own baskets. On your outside tour, one of the first things you'll see is our replica canoe here. Um, when the Native Americans made this canoe, they usually used entire trees cut out and they would lay hot coals down the center that would burn down through and they would scrape it out to make this shape. This isn't a bunch of pieces of wood nailed together, it is one whole tree to create this canoe. Now this is a replica that was made for us by the Boy Scouts about two or three years ago, but it can give you a pretty good idea of what a scale sized canoe would look like. Now we're standing in front of the main mound here. As you can see behind me, there's, we have the main mound complex as well as the central plaza. The central plaza was a central area for people to get together, play different games such as stickball, which would solve different disputes and it was also a really good way for people to get together. So the person who probably lived on top of this mound may have been the chief or the uh, head political figure in, this, um, in the region. The Nature Trail and Arboretum is right behind the main mail complex here at Chuckalisa. If you have an opportunity to come back here, it's a great walk through the woods. It's about a quarter of a mile long, takes about 20 to 30 minutes. It's a little bit up and down, but it's beautiful. It goes out to the bluff and all the way around back to the, to the entrance here at the trailhead. Welcome to our hands-on archaeology lab here at the CH Nash Museum. Here, students and visitors can get an idea exactly what archaeologists do. We have different methods of dating. We also have different analysis from faunal to ethnobotany. On the other side, we have trade routes. We also have lithic analysis as well as pottery. At the CH Nash Museum, we offer volunteer days once a month. Volunteers get the opportunity to come into the museum and help process artifacts from around the Tennessee region. Here's a little example of what volunteers will get to do. Um, for instance, you'll take a bag or box of artifacts, prehistoric artifacts, and separate out different things such as shells, bone, lithic points, and house dog. So here is a, just a good example of how we label the bags. They'll be labeled and processed. Um, it's really laid back atmosphere where everyone can kind of get together and learn a little bit more about prehistoric artifacts. Welcome to the exhibit hall of the C.H. Nash Museum at Chuckalissa. This part of the exhibit helps describe the different prehistoric and historic periods that are represented here at the site. The prehistoric periods go all the way from the earliest period, which, the, which are the Paleo-Indians. Paleo-Indians are your hunter and gatherers. They go through, all the way through the Archaic, the Woodland, and the Mississippian period. It's the Mississippian period, which is the period that goes up until the period of European contact, that we have the most evidence for here at Chuckalissa. This diorama helps exemplify what the site may have looked like during the Mississippian period. As you see at that time, the Mississippi River was a lot closer. It has since moved a couple uh, miles to the west of us. The site is up on the natural bluff here. We have two large earthwork mounds. These mounds were created by heaping basketfuls of earth and the mounds were used for habitation, for homes. The house of the chief would have been on the large mound. Here at the museum, we are trying to incorporate more of the historic period at the site here at Chuckalissa. Up until recently, nothing had been mentioned about the historic period. 
It's interesting to know that the site was, during the Civil War, was used as a plantation. After the Civil War, we had many sharecroppers that were living here. It's many of the, this community and the sense of descendants of this community that are still here today that make up the Boxtown area. We also have information on T.O. Fuller, who the park was named after. He was a prominent man during the beginning part of the last period, last century. This exhibit helps demonstrate various dress and adornment by the Native Americans that may have lived at this site. You see, the models are dressed in natural materials such as skins, fox skins, and also feathers. She is wearing a vest made of feathers. Jewelry was made from natural products as well, such as shells and bone or teeth. Here at the site, we have found many special vessels. These are not your everyday wear. These are our special ritual vessels. The vessel in particular that we have found most interesting is this pot, which is called the Sinti pot. Sinti is the Choctaw word for snake. And on this vessel is an incised drawing of a Sinti, a snake. The Sinti, the two intertwined Sinti, or rattlesnakes, are the design that we use for our mascot here at Chukalissa. This exhibit was created by the Chickasaw Nation of Oklahoma. The Chickasaw and the Choctaw are the two Native American tribes that were from this area of the Mississippi. We feature information about Chickasaw culture such as their dress, which is the traditional dress of the Chickasaw, and some other items that are important to the Chickasaw, such as stick balls and some dolls and some books that they have written. Here at the C.H. Nash Museum at Chukalissa, we've been fortunate to have many members of the Mississippi Band of Choctaw who have worked here over the years. Many of the Choctaw have worked as staff and administrators or also helped us interpret the site and been involved in our many events such as heritage days or powwows. Many of the Choctaw have made crafts in the traditional ways such as baskets and pottery and beadwork and they have been um, showcased here in the shop and in the museum. This exhibit also features some of the culture of the Choctaw that they would like to share with us such as their traditional dress which is the prairie style. Also, some of their beadwork. The Choctaw are known for excellent beadwork. The beadwork on the belt and the necklaces and the hat have symbols on them. Each of the symbols have specific meaning in the designs. All of the reproduction pottery that you see here and the beadwork and basketry are all made by locals, members of the Mississippi Band of Choctaw.